Hi guys, it's Scoggins. Um, we are going to be doing one of our last tutorials here for photo editing. This one we're going to be taking a beautiful picture of the Golden Gate Bridge and we're going to be making it into a watercolor photograph effect. Um, so it's going to look like a painting by the time we're done. So over here I have my all images file for project like we've been using and I'm going to take my Golden Gate picture and I'm going to drag it here to Photoshop in order to open it up. As you can see it's a very pretty image. Um, make it a little bit bigger for you so that you can see. So for this project, we've been moving things around, we've been kind of taking things away and deleting things, but what I wanted to do for this one is to show you a way to take a photograph and be a little bit more creative. So we're gonna take this beautiful um, photograph, I chose this because I really like the colors, but I also really like the composition to work with today. You're gonna follow along, you're gonna do the same photograph, and then you're gonna actually pick a photograph yourself to do the same technique with. So first and foremost, before I can do anything else, I'm gonna come over here and unlock my picture and it's going to become my layer zero. So I'm going to rename this and call it bridge. And in order to protect this photograph as I move through editing, I want to create a smart object to work with. So I'm going to say right here, convert to smart object. And what this is going to do is as I'm starting to add the filters, which I'm getting ready to start, it's going to protect the image, the resolution, the quality of this first, the picture. And if I want to change things, I can very easily go back. Remember that we have um, non-destructive versus destructive editing. When you change it to a smart object, which should have this little icon right here, um, it's going to be non-destructive editing. And then I can ensure that I'm not messing up my original. Okay. So we're going to start by going to our filters and we're going to choose our filter gallery. You want to make sure that you always go down and choose filter gallery. It might pop up here and say filter gallery. This is going to be the last filter you did. So if instead you want to choose your filter gallery and it's going to pop open the gallery like we see here. And what we're going to do is we're going to start with doing what's called a dry brush. It's over here under artistic. We're going to come over here to dry brush and it's going to give us some setting choices. You can see that it just changed, right? Compared to uh, right, like based on these settings. So I'm going to change this here to a 10. I'm going to change this to a 10 and I'm going to leave my texture at one. Um, because I'm, I'm trying to go for a watercolor effect. I want a soft look, but don't worry. We're not even close to being done. So I'm going to say, okay. And that effect is going to take, place on my main photograph. And if you look over here, see how it says smart filters and filter gallery. There's my first one. So I can actually make some changes and I can adjust it if I wanted to, to hide it. There's it back away. And then again, this is that protecting our original image so it's non-destructive, okay? So I'm gonna reopen my filter gallery, okay? And again, remember how I said that you wanna choose the second one. Don't choose this one because that's just gonna put another dry brush. We wanna choose a whole new one. And this time we're gonna go down and we're gonna choose our cutout. Um, cutout is gonna be at the same, so where is it? My, right there. We're gonna choose cutout this time. Now, it looks a little funny. Again, don't worry, we're gonna be changing some things over here. So we're gonna change this to a five. We're gonna change this to a four. Um, and then we're going to change this to a one to lower the quality. But we're not even done after that because once we're done, we're going to say, okay. And this is now really more than what we want. So over here, if you look, there's a little, like, it looks like two lines and two arrows. I'm going to double click on that. It's going to say, okay. And this blending option is going to pop up. And I want to change it from normal down here to pin light. See what it did? It kind of took that option and it softened it, okay? And now I'm gonna say okay. Except for I did the wrong one. <laughs> Pin light, I was like, what happened? So let me go back and change this one to normal. There we go. And that's what we wanted to look like. All right, now we're back in business, I apologize. So the next thing we want to do is we're going to add a blur. And again, we want to make sure that we're adding a smart blur. So we're going to come up here. We're going to say blur and we're going to choose smart blur. And on the smart blur, again, we're going to get some settings and we want to adjust this to a radius of 5.0. 
but the threshold we want to bring all the way up to 100 and we're going to change the quality from low to high because we want a really clear clean blur and we're going to say okay it's going to take a second and now it got really really blurry so instead we want to reduce that blending again so we're going to double click on this top one that says smart blur and we're going to change it to a screen effect there it is and we're going to turn our opacity down to 50 percent and we're going to say okay so now you see we've got that blur but it's a little softer than it was before okay we're also going to add one more layer. We're going to come up here to filter and we're going to say filter gallery. And this time we want to go under the stylize menu. Oh, excuse me. We don't want to do that. We want to go to filter this stylize and we're going to do find edges. That is clearly not what we want, right? So again, we need to go in and we're going to adjust our blending layer. And then this time, because we just want these these lines, right? That's all we want is we want to bring out those lines and kind of help bring it in. So we're going to change our blending mode to multiply and see we just now we're going to get some of those soft dark lines to help us differentiate the different pieces. It's really starting to kind of get there, right? But one of the things it doesn't have is whenever, if you've ever done watercolor painting, it, is, it always has a, the, the paper that we use for watercolor, it's got a kind of a rough texture. So in this folder, I've given you an ivory off white paper texture. We're just going to drag that on top, okay, and we're going to just transform it to fill our whole page, and then we're going to hit enter to get out of transform. And we want to change that blending mode right up here to multiply because we just want that texture. See the difference? No texture with the texture, no texture with the texture, just a little bit. And it kind of gets us that really nice kind of rough look. The last thing we're gonna do, and this is really cool, and this is gonna show you how we use brushes, which we haven't really used a lot of brushes yet and how to add brushes. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. But before we do anything else, I wanna make this completely go away. So I'm gonna come to layer and layer mask and I'm gonna hide all. And when I hide all, you'll notice that my picture went away. Don't worry, it's still there, okay? What we're gonna do is we're now going to install some really cool brushes. So I'm gonna go to my brushes and I'm gonna come down over here to this, this uh, gear option and I'm gonna say preset manager. Once again, I've given you the brush file. So I'm gonna come up to preset type to brushes and I'm gonna say load. Now I haven't loaded mine yet, so mine aren't in here. These are all the brushes I have so far. When you click load, it's going to give you an option to find files. So I'm going to go to that folder that I have over here, and there's that file I'm looking for. I just have to pull it open out of all of my drudgery files. And it's going to look like a brush file. So it's going to have this little brush icon, and we're going to say open. And once you open, you'll see that it added all of these really cool watercolor brushes. And I'm going to say done. Up here, you can change it to large icon. I like large icon just because I like to really be able to see what my brushes look like. I have all these different brushes. Now, it's really important that your brushes down here on your colors are set white on top of black because what we're going to do is while we're drawing here, we're going to make sure this black box is selected. We're going to choose one of these watercolor brushes. It doesn't matter. There's really no right or wrong answer for this. And all we're going to do is start revealing our image below. Okay. So when we choose this white versus black, if this were black, it wouldn't be doing this. It, the white helps us kind of erase our mask. If you can see over here, are you looking where I am? Over here, it's kind of slowly starting to show me what's uncovered. Okay. These watercolor brushes are real soft. They're not fully um, hard like you can't it doesn't fully erase the whole thing so I kind of have to take a bit of a blend and I'm going to use some different brushes and kind of move things around and kind of until I get a look that I like um, you have a lot in here to choose from so what's cool is, is nobody's is going to look the same which is I think kind of neat because I don't think anybody should look the same that's what helps us be creative 
Now I want to get some of this color in here a little more clear. So I'm going to take just one of them. It doesn't really matter. And I'm going to do a lot of erasing kind of in this middle section to get those colors to pop through and be really strong. So if you see over here, it's white in the middle now because I got my colors really strong. But we're just going to keep kind of blending these brushes until I get a look like I want. And that looks pretty good, I think. You know, everybody's again is going to look a little different and every image that you do is going to look different. I kind of left some of my border just because I wanted to see the paper like I'd actually um, kind of blended this together. So go ahead and give this a try. Hopefully you'll really enjoy this once you're done with the Golden Gate Bridge. Make sure you add that to your folder and then find a photograph of your own to do this technique to. Um, you can also adjust some of the settings to kind of get a different look, but make sure that you choose a high resolution image so that it's nice and clean. Hope you guys enjoy it and let us know if you have any questions. All right.